Hi, Dave here, and this is episode 30 of the Art Review series. And today we're going to check out the work of John Wallen Liberto. Liberto. Um, huge fan of this guy. Amazing, amazing artist. And uh, what I do like about his work is that he's pretty impressionistic in a way. Um, if you kind of zoom in, even in his most kind of high finished paintings, if you zoom in, you can see a lot of his very impressionistic strokes. And um, I think he's one of my personal kind of favorite top artists. Um, yeah, so he does have a YouTube channel, but... Uh, he doesn't post a lot of his paintings there, kind of process videos. He may post a few clips of his Gumroad tutorials there, just a kind of a nice kind of a quick view of his tutorial videos. But um, yeah, but do subscribe there just to be safe. I will be providing the links in the description below. Um, he does have, uh, yeah, he does have a Gumroad. He does sell a few tutorials, and I do recommend you buy some. I did buy a few of them. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I would recommend you follow him on Twitter and on Instagram if you have those um, platforms. Because he does post a few things on there that he doesn't include in his art station portfolio. So just, um, yeah. Especially when it comes to sketches, I think he posts, he posts a few more on those kinds of uh, platforms than on his um, art station. So let's take a look take a look at his work. Now he doesn't have a lot. Um <laughs> he actually has, you know, quite a few. But it, it isn't like it isn't like a full kind of massive portfolio where you keep kind of scrolling down, right? Um but uh, I will be picking a few of my kind of favorites and stuff. So yeah, so this is his Evangelion kind of sketch. I think he was trying to um, do his own take on this kind of mech, the Ava one. Um, very cool design. I love this kind of nice lighting, atmospherically. But the best thing about this is obviously this is, I think, a sketch because uh, he can go further. I know he, he, he has gone further in some of his um, paintings, but look at the way he uses a simple round brush and by the way i do recommend you check out his art station portfolio because he does post the kind of the high quality um photos or paintings so you can actually study his strokes oh he does use some texture brushes right here a bit but he go almost always goes back to his simple circle brush very cool stuff right and i do recommend you check out at least one of his tutorials so you can see his kind of process of painting. Um, he doesn't really have um, organized kind of layers. He does things layer by layer. Um, and he'll actually build up like a lot of like hundreds of layers um, based on my kind of um, experience of his tutorials. Um, that's kind of how he paints. Very kind of just, um, yeah, <laughs> not very organized, but it gets the job done. You know what I mean? I think this was the original sketch that he did of this kind of Eva um, one mech. And uh, as you can see, he can make something very... Um, he can define a lot of things with just a simple circle brush. And I think that's also what makes his works... What, what makes his work very appealing. Um, the simplicity of his tools. Plus the kind of the amount of things he can do with those kinds of limitations, right? Even the way he adds this kind of gradient, this kind of softness, he uses a hard brush to achieve that kind of um, effect. I mean, he could have used a soft brush, but he did not, right? Maybe in this part, he probably did. Mm. Here he did. But for some parts, he just uses a hard brush to kind of suggest a kind of soft gradation. Very cool kind of um, approach. And very nice kind of reflective um, suggestion here from the this kind of light thing, right? And yeah, I do suggest you zoom in on his work and just see the way he does his strokes. He does add some texture um, depending on the subject matter. This one, some kind of um, kind of a half tone thing. Shit. 
But yeah, you can see. I'm a lot of his strokes in this kind of view. And uh, what's so cool about this is that it gives you the confidence to paint more. Because it's kind of a great example that you can just keep painting and eventually you can reach something that's very kind of defined, right? Um, for example, this one's a bit more finished, I would say. A bit more highly detailed, but if you zoom in, right? You can see a lot of those mini kind of strokes. Um, very, very interesting the way he uh, approaches his work. And there's so much confidence, I think, in the way he paints. And um, he does have a lot of hue in his work, I think, which also makes his work kind of lively to look at, right? Um, oh, you can't really zoom in on this one. Um, okay. Oof. And even the way he paints the earth in the background, very simple. Um, he did paint the clouds as well, right? Or suggest to them in the kind of this view, in the kind of atmosphere. Um, and I love the way he was able to kind of um, suggest the kind of space-like environment, right? Very kind of a uh, high above feeling. Um, and look at that. You can see a lot of his circle brushes. Um, I mean, he doesn't just use the uh, circle brush, but it's kind of the common brush that he does use. And um, it's kind of a flex. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Right? Look at the way he paints this sort of thing with his kind of dashy kind of, kinds of strokes, right? Um, ah. <sighs> It's so full, you know what I mean? And I think I do want to be able to achieve this. Because I may be okay with doing some kind of silhouette. But I need to go a step further and kind of define things more. Right? In this kind of level. Um, and seeing his work, especially zoomed in, you can see it's still impressionistic. But he does spend time just filling in some of the... Adding, adding information to the kind of silhouette. And once you kind of zoom out, it does work very well. And it looks kind of highly defined, right? In this view. So that's very kind of interesting to me. Same thing here, even the way he paints the folks right here. Very simple, but very suggestible, right? The lighting is good. And um, even for this kind of light blue part, just it's just really, uh, what, one, two, three strokes, right? very efficient way of painting and very full it ends up looking very um kind of complete and he does focus obviously on certain parts uh the main focus would obviously be this kind of a uh, front part of this kind of ship mech thing and he can do some kind of sketches with line um i think that's how he starts um the same way he did with the uh, evangelion evangelion kind of sketch um yeah. Fuck. Shit. Look at the way he paints the clouds in the atmosphere, right? Um, fuck. Um, this one doesn't zoom in as much. This was probably bigger. And yeah, look at how full it is, right? And if you zoom out, there's this nice kind of shadow in this area. Because obviously there is some kind of space station right and maybe this guy's kind of uh docking inside and he even suggested a person right in the kind of um cockpit very cool stuff very nice design as well um oof now this ship design is a bit different oh you can zoom in okay damn very nice he's very good with the kind of silhouettes and the shapes of things um shit can't zoom in okay look at that he does have color dynamics on in some of his um, strokes um but you, you can still see the kind of circle brush or round brush um use in his work and he does clean up the edges of this ship to kind of separate it more clearly from the kind of earth beneath and uh, look at that kind of 
suggestive stroke or series of strokes, right? If you zoom out, it looks very, very well done. Fuck. Oh, he does have a kind of a Ninja Turtles kind of fan art, I think. Um, and again, he applies the same kind of painting style, right? He does have a few texture brushes when it comes to the kind of branch-like texture in the background. Um, and some kind of opaque brushes from time to time, but he does go back to his round brush. And um, a lot of hues also in his paintings again. And it does make your paintings more lively if you have um, kind of a lot of hues. It, it doesn't have to be all in kind of the same equal saturation. You can kind of tone down the hues that are not as important, right? But I think your kind of eye can tell if something is kind of filled up, right? So just try to add some hues. Like this piece, look at that. It's not just the green in the background, right? There are some pinks, some reds, some yellows. He probably had a texture or a photo texture behind to kind of help with that. And then he painted on top of it, right? And even this figure, the dress, even the shield is obviously wooden, right? But he did add some greens, some reds, some oranges, some purples. And it looks more alive to me that way. Very cool stuff. Um, John Wallen, by the way, based on his portfolio, focuses more on um, sci-fi. Or he has a lot more sci-fi works compared to his more fantasy um, kinds of um, work. And again, a lot of the circle brush <laughs> or round brush, right? Damn. Fuck. Now this one is more of a highly defined, I would say, painting or illustration. Um, if you zoom in. It's even kind of hard to see his actual strokes in this kind of zoomed in version, right? Or zoomed in view. Um, so this is obviously a very highly painted and detailed um, painting or illustration. Um, very cool. I personally wouldn't go this far because it's just not my appeal. Um, I'm more kind of fascinated by this type of stuff if you kind of zoom in. Right? You can see a lot of the- oh, he did have color dynamics on with this kind of a- or is this color dynamics? Uh, let me just um, color dynamics or is it oh I don't think so I think it's some kind of a individual strokes that he just kept going back and forth with um, very interesting right look at that he did use some photo textures probably in the beginning to help kind of determine the main color schemes right um, very dynamic also. He does, I, I do love his mechs, especially the kind of Jaeger designs. Um, and even for this beast, or this kaiju, I think. Look at that. Look at the amount of strokes you can see. Very suggestive, very impressionistic. This is more of my kind of um, thing. I'm very attracted to this kind of work. Um, even the way he paints the kind of, um, the kind of uh, shield, the face shield of this kind of mech he did add some kind of nice reflections right um and look at that very interesting and this hand looks very detailed right but if you zoom in you can see a lot of the uh the very impressionistic strokes ah oh, so pretty um I think he does use a few brushes, a few textured and a few rough brushes, but again he does go back to his um, basic um, circle brush. Oh, he even painted the kind of pigeons and shit. <laughs> um, and I think they're great because it does add some scale and it makes the it makes the kind of mech or Jaeger and Kaiju look way way bigger. I think so. Right? Very nice. Ah, look at that. Bam. Okay, another kind of cover piece. Uh, Kaiju. Again, you can see a lot of his strokes in this view. Oh my god. Damn. And I'm very happy that he did post the uh, the kind of high resolution um, paintings. Um. And I love the way he did the uh, the face kind of shield thing, the kind of reflective 
thing going on. Plus the nice kind of green tint. Very nice. The background kept very vague and simple enough because obviously it's about this kaiju attacking this kind of um, Jaeger, right? And look, he's, he's not even defining every single form in the mech. He's just tackling the kind of main areas and suggesting those main um, areas, right? With some nice kind of color hue variations and a few value variations. And that's enough to suggest the kind of mech. I mean, look at that. That's not detailed at all, but if you zoom out, it looks kind of like you'll be able to fill in the gaps, you know what I mean? So I think that's the kind of trick. To paint things in an impressionistic manner, um, in a very kind of small level, so that when you zoom out, it looks kind of defined. <laughs> very nice kind of um, approach. Even the way he paints the smoke, right? Very interesting. He may, he may have used some kind of photo, but uh, to help with the kind of major forms, but he did paint over it, right? To kind of make it blend with the uh, everything else. Yeah, I think he does have a Gumroad tutorial of this um, environment sketch painting. And I think he did use some basic kind of 3D mass, massing, and then he painted on top of it. Very interesting. Um, and I do like how he uses photos minimally, because that's kind of my problem, right? Uh, I was doing too much of the photo bashing, but I, I wasn't even actually changing anything. And I actually did not know, well not did not know, but I wasn't actually painting a lot of the, um, my artwork back then. So, yeah. I do like the way he approaches his kind of 3D and photo bashing. Um, he keeps it sub he, he makes it a supplementary thing and not the kind of main avenue to which he makes the art right he does more of the painting and that's what i like about his work he's more of a painter more of an illustrator i guess um ah oh, fuck look at that very interesting kind of ship design but look at the amount of the kind of energy the kind of just boldness in the way he paints right but if you zoom out oh Fuck. Damn. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, even the building in the background, very kept simple, right? Look at that. It, it, it looks kind of messy, very impressionistic, but uh, he he paints the kind of right areas enough that when you zoom out, you can kind of tell that shit. It's a building, right? Fuck. Even the kind of a platform or the kind of landing um, station here. Very interesting kind of suggestive elements. Um, look at that. It's so loose in a way. Um, lots of overlapping kind of strokes. But if you zoom out, fuck. Especially with this ship, obviously this is kind of the main um, object, right? The main subject thing. Fuck. <laughs> Pikachu. Uh, nice. Oh, I love this one. I think I this is one of the first pieces I saw of his um, work. Look at the way he simplified this kind of foreground area, right? Damn, you can see a lot of the round brush work. And even in the architecture in the background, you can see a lot of the overlapping strokes. And it's kind of very... It shows a lot of... Or it does... You need to be able to watch his actual um, video process thing, the real-time version. Um, so I suggest you buy at least one tutorial. He does have, I think, one free one where he paints a kind of a, a plane in a kind of station, right? Um, I think it's for free, kind of just put in zero, something like that. Um, and you, if you see the way he paints, it's very kind of one layer after another. And uh, he just kind of paints over it. And that's what I like about his work. He solves problems through the painting. Or through just painting over the problem, right? And fixing it, right? And look at that. Very very kind of suggestive, right? Even these ships, very simple. Um, he did obviously focus a bit more on this um, thing. 
uh, he did spend time lettering the FedEx kind of logo, right? But even this ship is very simple in the way it's painted, right? Very kind of efficient way of painting. Um, he does use the lasso tool a lot. I did notice that in the way he paints um, to kind of help with uh, mm, painting certain parts, kind of hard edges especially, and even in terms of kind of silhouettes. Um, he loves using the uh, the polygonal lasso tool, especially. Um, look at that. Look at the way he simplified the kind of bottom part. The kind of city area, right? And this is the kind of... Um, this one's higher above, right? This kind of structure, closer to the clouds. Very cool concept. Um, ah, And the colors are very kind of... They fit. Uh, the pinks, the reds, and the purples. Kind of analogous, I think that's the word analogous, kind of color scheme, and the blues. Well done. Chemtrails? <laughs> uh, no, probably, oh, this could be some kind of wire? Or no, maybe something's being launched? But they're kind of curvy though. Missiles, perhaps? Yeah, chemtrails. <laughs> um, oh, now this one is too highly detailed for me. And I'm not sure how big this one is originally was. <laughs> Maybe he did use some photos for the earth parts here. But the uh, fuck. Very kind of a fool, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> I'm not sure what this is for. Some kind of game, perhaps. Um, you know, I'm very interested to see how he would approach kind of a Transformers kind of film. Because I do love the way he does his Jaegers, right? How would he design a kind of Transformer? That's kind of my kind of curio curiosity um, when it comes to his work. Um, and again, if you zoom in, obviously it's a kind of Star Wars um, fan art piece, right? You can see a lot of his strokes. Um, again, he goes back a lot to his circle brush, but he does have a few extra brushes to help add a bit of texture, right? You can see it here even. Um, here, in the kind of, um, platform, right? Here, also. And I think it's really helpful to just keep your tool set very, uh, minimal. And here you can see a basic texture brush, kind of a branchy kind of brush. Texture brush, right? And in that way, you can focus more on the actual painting, right? Instead of having to go through your entire kind of library of brushes, um, yeah. Ooh, if you zoom in, wow, look at that. He did add some nice kind of pencil strokes on some areas, right? Um, maybe he had, oh, he did have color dynamics on here in this part. You can see it. Even with the circle brush, he does have color dynamics on. I um, mean, it does add a nice texture and even some hue variety if you kind of just play with the, uh, the settings in that setting, right? You don't, you, you don't even have to use photos for that, you could just um, click the, uh, or play with the color dynamics of uh, of any brush, essentially, right? So this is a very kind of highly defined, I would say, piece. Especially if you have it kind of zoomed out. But again, if you focus in on a certain part, you can see more of his strokes, right? But even at this view, it's kind of still very defined for me. Um, this is more of a marketing piece, I would say. This could be, or this could end up in some kind of a cover for something, right? Very high quality. And he can reach this kind of level of, um, look at those hands. Damn. Yeah, he can push his more impressionistic stuff to a, to a more imp less impressionistic or more defined kind of piece. Kind of highly, a lot cleaner. Um. I mean, you can still see some of his strokes if you zoom in, but it's way more cleaner and more defined. Not cleaner, but more defined, I would say. Um, damn. Oh, another fantasy kind of piece, I would say, I think. Or historical piece. Um, again, you can see a lot of his circle brushes. Even in the background, he did keep some of the, especially as you go further back, very simple silhouettes and brush strokes, right? Some texture, I think a photo maybe, and then some color dynamic um, brushes, right? 
um, some photo texture here, and then he kind of painted painted on top of it to kind of um, help it blend with the rest of the piece, right? I do like the way he painted this part of the sword. There's some kind of light source hitting this bottom part, right? Very nice. And even the way he paints the face, the way he paints everything else, it's kind of the way he paints everything else. <laughs> Very kind of a stroke by stroke type of painting, right? He's not an opaque kind of painter. That's kind of what I say when, for example, if you check out Derek Zabrocki's work, he doesn't, he, he, he does not paint in this kind of style where he does things stroke by stroke. He's more of a big stroke kind of guy. Um, I would put uh, John Wallen Liberto along with Lixen Yin, Craig Mullins, right? Um, I think they're kind of this, in the same category of um, painters or illustrators, right? Nice. He does have a few texture brushes to help just add a little more brush variety in his work. Maybe some photo bashing a bit. Maybe. I think, not sure. Very cool. Look at that. As you zoom in, it looks very kind of impressionistic. You know, even in this kind of eye part, it's kind of quite defined in this very view. Um, a little more texture brushes, because obviously this thing is more, it's a reptile, obviously a dinosaur, so it's going to be a little more rough in the kind of skin, so. I think it's more appropriate to use kind of textured brushes. And whenever you're using textured brushes, you don't always have to exactly use textured brushes. <laughs> um, what you can do is actually just um, increase the spacing of some of, your, of some of your brushes and you can get some decent, rough, kind of gritty texture, right? So, uh, yeah. So this one's more of an environment. I think this is some kind of halo piece. Um, he did have some photo bashing here um, to help with some of the textures and then he painted the parts where he needed to paint, right? Now I'm not sure how long this painting took but uh, I'm going to guess it took a while. Um, based on his uh, tutorials, video tutorials on Gumroad, most of his paintings I think last like two hours. Two and a half to three hours so i'm not sure if he can achieve the same thing with his environments um this one's a little more detailed to me very kind of highly defined even the wheels are very kind of high highly defined but again if you zoom in you can see a lot of the the human aspects of it right because this one it looks kind of um maybe it looks even kind of 3d if you kind of squint your eyes a bit Right? Because the wheels are just too kind of perfect <laughs> in this kind of view. But if you zoom in, you can see that kind of human aspect that this was this this that this was done by um hand, right? Fuck. Oh my god. I do have the PSD of this because um yeah, I did buy one of his tutorials and shit. Very interesting. I mean, look at that. Fuck. He did leave the background more kind of sketchy, more suggestive and impressionistic. And obviously he went uh, further a little more when it came to the um, the actual mech. And I love the way he does again the kind of um, the face shield. You can see this in a lot of like um, motorcycle helmets, ski helmets, um, sunglasses, right? Um, very interesting. Uh, and I'm very kind of fascinated by the way he fills up the design. Um, it actually looks like a mech, even though it's very impressionistic, right? Very kind of random in a way. It still looks like an actual mech. And how does he uh, pull this off? I'm not sure. Um, does he do a lot of studies kind of behind the scenes? Can't tell. Um, but, uh, fuck. I mean, look at that. Again, I do suggest you zoom in on his paintings and just be fascinated. <laughs> and uh, study them. Um, and, uh, 
I think the best thing that I found in this work is that you can achieve something that's very kind of high quality, even if you're not the highly defined kind of painter. You know what I mean? Um, maybe he doesn't zoom in as much, probably. In the beginning, at least, at least, and then when it when he wants to detail something to add or to kind of define a certain edge, he'll probably zoom in, right, and just define things a bit more. Um, maybe. This was more of a marketing piece because I mean, look at that. It's too defined for me. This is like god level kinds of illustrations, right? I and mean, when you can see the strokes. But they're so small. Some texture brush right here. But God. And again, he's flexing his kind of circle brush. Um, <laughs> Fuck. I, I think he did have a sketch. Oh, this was the kind of initial sketch for a kind of halo cover thing. And then he went in and defined it even more. Look at that. Fuck. Very inspirational. Um, I love it. Another kind of environment piece. Again, you can see a lot of his circle brush. Um, some, some of it with color dynamics on. Some texture brushes, right? Some photo bashing to help with or add some extra bits of detail. Um, very interesting kind of ship. Creature? Ship? Halo? thing and again I like how he focuses his painting more on the parts that are um, the center of attention or the focus right um, he didn't have to detail this guy too much right because he's not the um, the main focal point it's this kind of entrance right or this kind of area right here and I love the way he does his lighting, right? If you zoom in, maybe he did use a soft brush, right? To kind of help with the, um, that nice kind of edge gradient. Very nice. Shh, right here. And then that kind of dash of light over here. Um, And uh, shit, this one is another one of his uh, Jaeger designs in a different view from a kind of top-down view. Um, very nice perspective actually, very interesting. Um, fuck. Look at that. Beautiful. And look at the amount of hues that he uh, kind of applies to his work. It makes it look more alive again, right? Oranges, the greens, the blues, the purples, the pinks. Fuck. Lots of contrasts going on. The kind of green and the kind of um, red, orange, right? The kind of highlight here, the kind of area that's lit and the area that's not lit. Warm cool warm you can see it in the kind of face shield or screen right very nicely done and the red green complementary um fuck <laughs> and again look at the way he uh suggested the foot in the bottom he didn't even have to, to uh detail it right because it's kind of too far out um the focus is on the kind of head fuck right and the things surrounding it or at least close to it right and very simple human figures right here um he was able to suggest the helmet and the kind of jacket fuck and the hands fuck fuck my life fuck it's so kind of full of again it's not too detailed but it's so kind of full like there's kind of something in it right Oh, ho, ho, ho. damn. I love this kind of blast effect he did right here. Um, I think this is set in a kind of raining kind of environment. 
I think he was trying to suggest in this kind of thing that um, there is a kind of light drizzle of rain happening and you can hardly see the kind of droplets because obviously this mech is pretty freaking big um, even if you don't have like human figures um, you can indicate scale by adding some trees or buildings and you can kind of tell how big something is and he did add a nice simple mech in the back Look at that! Fuck! And look at that kind of face shield or kind of eye thing. He added some koi fish. Very nice touch. Ah, just looking at its work just makes me uh want to paint. You know what I mean? Hmm. Beautiful. Um. Again, he did do another kind of blast effect. If you zoom in, damn, look at that. Very suggestive. Lots of hard and soft brushes. You can see some gradients here. Some texture in the background a bit. And in the actual ship. Very impressionistic. Shit. Ooh! Yeah, this is the one I think that did have a video tutorial. Um, ah, shit. He did add some nice skulls to kind of add some kind of personality to the to this kind of mech, or at least maybe the pilot of this mech, right? Look at the way he paints everything with the round brush. Fuck. And I do like the way he paints the lights. He didn't have to, um, like take a photo, right? Or photo bash some kind of light source. He just painted it with a round brush, a white in the middle, and then some pinks and blues to kind of indicate that kind of lighting effect where the kind of color shift a bit surrounding the light source. Very interesting the way he kind of simplified that um, idea. And again, the, w the way he designs and kind of builds the forms or suggests the forms of this kind of mech um, without going into too much detail um, the eye just kind of fills in the um, the details even in this part he didn't have to add detail because there's some kind of light and it did kind of cover it right because that's what usually happens if there's some, some kind of light source close to you it, it can kind of block details far away very nice touch and again, lots of hues, greens, yellows, reds, blues, everything. Um. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I also did buy this tutorial again. <laughs> um, this one, he was painting some kind of um mech, spider mech, a spider kind of mech, and um, again very simple brush brush work and i think this is when i did notice that he did use the lasso tool a lot to kind of help define the kind of edges of his um silhouettes and forms and again the round brush fuck oh nice ship design right here um And he's pretty good with the lighting too. Um, I think. Look at that. Some photo here. He simplified the figures. Um, very nice kind of um, lighting effect. It's kind of sharp. Um, there's some kind of um, thing above. Probably a ship. And this was recently perhaps dropped off or something. Right? That's the feeling I'm getting with this kind of a mech. Fuck. Look at that. And I'm so interested the way on the way he uh, adds the details. Like how does he figure all this out, right? Fuck. A lot of textures though in the background. 
this one's more of a keyframe because it does have a little more action, right? Ah, it's so full. Oh, he did have a few photos, I think. Did he? Maybe, maybe not. Hard to say. Okay, so this is his last piece that we're going to take a look at. Um, I love the way he simplified the background because obviously um, the focus is on this kind of ship thing design. If you zoom in, you can see a lot of his brush strokes, right? Mostly the round brush, right? Plus a few textured, opaque brushes. Um, and the design, the way he defines the forms with just the kind of um, uh, repetitive kind of strokes. Um, very impressive. Look at that. And again, look at the, he could have used a soft brush to indicate this kind of light source. But again, this is one of those cases where he can, or he, where he just simplifies it and just uses a simple round brush. Maybe drops the opacity a bit to help it overlap, right? But again, he doesn't use a soft brush. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. You know, it's very cool. It does have a nice kind of effect and appeal. So I hope you enjoy this kind of art review of John Wallen and Liberto's work. Please check out his um, Gumroad because he does have a lot of tutorials. Um, follow him on ArtStation, right? 30k subscribers or followers. Very cool. Um, and yeah, studies work. Zoom in on his paintings. And uh, yeah, keep painting and stay free.